If you imagine a process like a river flowing, the value should be flowing towards the customer all the time because we are here to serve the customer. The minute that stops, there's waste. Welcome to Lean Made Simple, a podcast for people who want to transform their business and their lives one step at a time. My name is Ryan Tierney from a company called Seaton Matters in Lamavari. I came across Lean eight years ago and since then it's totally transformed my life and the way I think about everything. And this podcast is designed to translate that message across to as many people as possible. Uh, my name is Matthew, podcast producer, bringing Lean into a digital business and learning a lot through the process as well. Today, we're talking about a concept that has radically transformed our business, the podcast business, and that is One Piece Flow. So Ryan, I thought maybe to help explain what One Piece Flow actually is, could you explain what the opposite of it is? Yeah, it's a good uh, it's a good starting point. The opposite of one piece flow is batching. And this is kind of like a bad word in the lean world. <laughs> uh, batching versus one piece flow. And it took me a long time to get my head around this. I'd read it in all the books, and but I never really got it at the start. We just inherently want to batch everything, want to make everything in huge numbers, make loads of it. You know, when I'm making one, I might as well just make 10 or 20 and put them in the shelf for later. But by producing things in large quantities is actually a really wasteful way of, of operating. And there's loads of examples of batching versus one piece flow, which we'll get into. But basically, the smallest batch practicable is the way we should be thinking. Mm. How can we make one or two as opposed to this big, huge batch of yeah. inventory. Can you actually give the example of the party bags? Party bags, yeah. So uh, just back in May, it was one of our kids' birthday party. And, you know, at the end of the party, you know, we'd give out party bags to all the, all the, the children that came to the party. And typically the way we would have done that was to lay out all 20 bags put, uh, you know, a certain type of sweet in all 20, <laughs> then go back to the start and put like a small toy in each one and yeah. keep repeating that process. So you had none finished, but then all of a sudden you had 20 finished all at the same time. But then what happens is, oh, I forgot to put such and such in the, in the party bag and you have to go back and redo them all, which is a defect mm. and which is over-processing. So the way that we make up the party bags, and it seems silly talking about <laughs> party bags, but this thinking translates into everything. You make up one and it's finished. You make up the next one and it's finished. Make up the third one and it's finished. Mm. But if we translate that to a production environment, we're finishing a product and sending it to the customer uh, a lot quicker than you would if you were making in a large batch. Let's actually, let's stay on this because this is really working for me. I'm, I'm enjoying this. So I'm picturing your living room, right? I don't know if you did it in your living room. And there was you, the first way, the batch way, you would have 20 bags set out everywhere. Yeah. So think about how much space that's taken up. Like, you know, you, you're trying not to fall over the party bags as someone's moving through. No, no, don't walk through there. Don't do that. Whereas if you're just doing one at a time, you keep all the stuff in one small space and you're just boom, 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 finished. Yeah. If you want to take a break for whatever reason, oh, you know, we're tired, puffed out, t making 10 party bags really tired you guys out. Yeah. <laughs> you go get a cup of tea and you can just come straight back without this massive mess being in the living room as well. Uh, exactly. And the key to the whole thing is that the quality is better. Mm. Because you're only focusing on one, one chair, one party bag, one, whatever you're making, you're, all your attention is on that one. So you, you're more focused and the quality is much, much better in a one-piece flow scenario. Whereas with making a huge batch, chances are there's a mistake, but the mistake could be in all 10 of those. Right. And you don't know until they're passed to the next stage. You only realize at the very last step when you try to put a tube of bubbles into the party bag, these don't even fit in the bag. And then you've wasted all 20 bags and you have to figure out a different solution. Yep, exactly. And we done this when we... Uh, before Lean at Seat Matters, we batched all our, our uh, manufacturing. So we, we had this huge 20-foot long table and we laid out all the base frames for the, for the chairs and fitted all the casters, you know, fit all the casters, one, two, three, four, five, a big line of maybe 12 chairs. Then we put all the seat frames in 12 chairs. Then we put the arms and the upholstery in 12 chairs. Mm. Then maybe the cushion in 12 chairs. So we had no chairs finished, but then we had a batch finished all at the one time. But think of the amount of space, as you say, huge workbenches, 
huge factory space, huge, uh, you know, areas for inventory. And the factory was actually getting to the point where we thought we needed to extend the factory. We <laughs> needed a bigger factory. But thankfully, we, we didn't. And we found out about one piece flow just in time. Amazing. Okay, so like we always do on the podcast with these principles, these lean principles, we're going to go through and talk about three different levels and how the principle applies to the three different levels of our life. So the first one is our personal life. The second one is our professional life on an organizational level. Yeah. And the third one is like global and societal. So really good personal example with the party bags. Any more that you've got? Yeah, a really good example is if you've ever been to an airport, which most people have, you'll see an escalator and you'll see an elevator. So an escalator, people move towards the escalator, they go onto it, they're off the other side, it's total flow. That's one piece flow. Hmm. As you're being presented to the escalator to go up the stairs, you're you're getting off the other end. As opposed to an elevator, so you'll see a large batch. Remember batching? So That's right, yeah. 10 people standing at the elevator, the doors open, 10 people get in, it goes upstairs and 10 get off. But while that's moving and getting off, there's another batch of 10 waiting at the bottom. So that's batch production. So it's the elevator versus the escalator. Wow. And that's the way we've changed our business. We used to be the elevator, and now we're the escalator, where we're making chairs. Every 22 minutes, we're making a chair. We're not waiting until a Thursday evening or a Friday morning to finish 50 chairs. We're making them as the customer orders them. Crazy. Another yeah. example I heard you say one time was uh the difference between or like an annual spring clean yeah. is a form of batching uh, tell uh, me more is, about that it is uh, so like spring cleaning yeah you, you even the councils you know the local council goes around with a big truck and gathers up everybody's uh waste from that from that spring clean and it's really a batch it's a batch scenario you're waiting until one point in the year to clean your house <laughs> <laughs> or to get rid of stuff one piece flow thinking is that you keep your house in order all the time. Every mm. day you're, or every week you're 3S and you're cleaning, you're tidying. If there's anything you don't need, you're getting it away there and then, as opposed to this batch scenario. Mm. We just inherent, inherently think that batch is better than it's really not. Yeah. Okay. So moving into level two then in that organizational life, if we think about like individual workers, how can individual workers kind of start to incorporate one piece flow into their role, into their responsibility? I can take one example from Seat Matters, from our, our company. Um, in the sewing department, we used to sew 10 chairs at a time, thinking that when I'm sewing the arm, I might as well just sew 10. I'll just keep sewing. <laughs> you know, I'm set up to do arms. Let's sew all the arms. But when we find out about the one piece flow uh, concept, we said, okay, let's sew one chair, get it on to the next station, and then I'll start sewing another one. Keep it moving. So it's to create flow throughout the organization. So ideally, the order comes in to your office. It flows through the production, through the factory, onto a truck and off the other end. The, the goal is total flow throughout production. Mm. But what batch tends to do, batching uh, makes stuff stop. And stuff moves around really slowly in batches. But the other downfall of one of the main downfalls of batching is that more times than enough, there's a hidden defect in the middle of that batch, right? Which causes loads of rework, which is all waste. Yeah. Okay. So, from a podcast perspective, we were batching, and right. so this would be interesting from a digital perspective. We would record, say, maybe ten episodes in the week. Yeah. And then we would have 10 episodes that are sitting, quote unquote, on the shelf yeah. in cold storage on a hard drive that we then had, we would then batch edit. Yeah. And if we, when we did it that way, let's say, for example, your microphone wasn't working, that, that blue microphone you have right in front of you wasn't working. We would have 10 episodes where there's a weird noise on the blue mic. Yeah. And that's 10 episodes that have defects in them that would then need to be fixed or even worse, re-recorded. So now when we record an episode, we don't edit or work on another episode until the first one's finished. Yes. Until, not even the first one's finished, until the first one is uploaded, scheduled, everything's done. We always had the, the misconception that One Piece Flow was a production kind of thing, but we, we've taken that same thinking into the office with order processing, with marketing, with design. So in the past, we would have designed all our, the new product brochures for every chair. 
Then two weeks later, we got them all approved and we proofread them. Then another two weeks later, we made a made the changes. Then we sent them to the printers, and then we got a huge delivery of all these product brochures, pallets and pallets of stuff. But now, what do we do if we have a new operation manual or a new brochure or a new bit of market material, marketing material? We design it, we proof it, we check it, we print it. Mm. Then we do the next one: design, proof, check, print. So we're getting the changes made really quickly. Yeah, and there's no buffers in between. Interesting. So beyond kind of One Piece flow for the individual, you mentioned the sewing department. Yeah. How do you start to bring One Piece flow out to the entire organizational level? Yeah. So it's all about creating flow throughout the entire organization. You can be doing One Piece flow individually in your work cell, but there could be buffers between there and the next cell. So the goal is to reduce the buffer, reduce that safety net. It is risky. It sounds risky. But reduce the, the safety net between the first operation and the second, the mm. second and the third. Because if we reduce those buffers, we create one piece flow throughout the entire organization. So ideally, the order for the product comes in, it flows through the entire operation and it is delivered without stopping. I think I learned a long time ago that if you imagine a process like a, a, like a river flowing, the water should be running, it should be flowing all the time. The minute that stops... Mm. There's waste. The minute you see a process stopping, that's where waste occurs. So when I get invited to go and see factories that want help with lean, I just walk in the door and anything that I see that is stationary is waste. So if I see a huge batch of inventory sitting, I'm like, there's a problem, there's waste. That's sitting, that shouldn't be sitting. If it is sitting, it should be moving like in the next few hours, that should be moving towards the customer all the time. The value should be flowing towards the customer all the time mm. because we are here to serve the customer. That's all we're here to do, add value to the customer. So when a customer places an order for a specific thing and it waits for two weeks before anybody looks at it and then it goes to station one and it waits again for maybe three or four days, that, that's one of the wastes. It's waiting. The, the, the product should be flowing to the customer yeah. and not only through production, even for meetings, like we have a morning meeting every day. Why do we do that? Because of flow. It's all because of flow. We're catching problems every morning that mm. happened the day before. You know, in most companies, they might have a quarterly production meeting, a monthly production meeting. We're not going to wait a month to talk about stuff that happened three weeks ago. <laughs> you know, that, that isn't flow. We're catching uh, problems one piece flow. So it's one piece flow with meetings. It's one piece flow with production. It's one piece flow with ideas. If a customer has an idea or if somebody internally has an idea for an improvement, we action straight away. We talk about it that day. We don't put it on a list and review it at the end of the quarter. Mm. So our whole thinking is one piece flow and it creates flow throughout the entire organization. It's really, really interesting. I remember watching a tour video of Brad Cairns's factory and he talks about wanting his desire to create a river of wood Mm -hmm. So he makes doors, and so yeah. most of his raw material is wood. And he talks about, you know, he is looking to see if the river of wood is flowing through his factory. River and of as, wood, yeah. as you say, if it stops, then it's a problem, and everyone needs to jump on and figure out why that river has stopped flowing. <laughs> Whereas exactly. if you're in a batch system, you can't see that. It's not visual. And as you say, it's more risky. Yeah. But you obviously think it's worth the risk. A thousand percent worth the risk. It has totally transformed the way we serve our customer. It has totally transformed the way we think. Uh, quality is better. Lead time is better. Efficiency is better. Uh, and engagement is better. Because people, if somebody has an idea to change or make a tweak to that product, we can change the next one because it's not started yet. Mm. You know, so ideas are implemented quicker. Uh, product changes are implemented quicker. And it, it actually empowers people to come up with ideas and uh, it's actually more exciting uh, imagine sitting making a hundred of anything oh, how bored would you be terrible. you know but the way we manufacture is we're making as the customer demands mm -hmm. so we have a mixed line that's making all different variations of product and different types of chairs and it makes it more interesting for the person mm -hmm. they're doing this chair one minute the next thing they're doing a to totally different model and a different color and a different spec so it keeps the work more interesting mark and daniel what do you guys think about this one piece flow thing how have you guys applied this to you can go professional you can go personal any way you want i mean personally for myself uh 
I feel it's made a big difference for me because I'm just coming out of school and school had this kind of thing with homework in a way where you have to be doing homework for scheduled dates along the week. Basically, it wouldn't, all the work's not done in that one day. It's like done over multiple days, especially of coursework sometimes. What I love about this the most is that we come in, we get the work done before we leave mm. we don't have anything that means we can spend time with our families we yeah. can do some of our own business work like i can work on my own projects at home i can come in here get all the work done and that's it sorted for the rest of the day like i, do, I don't have to worry about anything else until tomorrow comes so it's just the best feeling ever yeah. <laughs> and i have to say this is the power of like bringing one piece food podcast production is when the day is finished you finished that episode you don't yeah. get halfway through an yeah. episode. You don't get a tenth of the way through an episode. When we sit down, you know, we'll block out a serious amount of time. We'll say, our one purpose here is to one piece flow this episode all the way through until it's finished. And then we never have yeah. to think about it again. Awesome example, Daniel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mark, anything from you? Very similar. But um, one thing one thing I do outside of the podcast is I have a small online business that I run as kind of a, a side project. And that's kind of producing sheet music for mostly musical theater companies now, actually. Oh. Um, so I'm getting the orders through. And the One Piece flow, I think the thing that that really makes a difference to is my feeling of how much I've accomplished in a day. So if I've got, say, in a week, if I've got four orders to complete, if I do little bits on each one, then I get a hit. On, okay, on Friday, I finish them all. And that's a really big hit. It's like, oh, yeah, everything's done. But I haven't got that once for the whole week. Mm. So my motivation for the whole week is just kind of, it's trundling along, trundling along, and then we get to Friday, and it's a big hit of, yeah, we've achieved something. Whereas when I'm doing them one at a time, it's every single day. Every Let's say I set just one order a day. Every day I'm getting that hit of, I've achieved I've achieved, yes. I've achieved. Right. And it's that right. kind of mental, <laughs> uh, that mental thought that just feels so much better that way. Mark, it's one of the craziest uh, things I've ever heard in my life. You're saying that you're batching your dopamine hits versus getting them <laughs> daily. <laughs> uh -huh. Which is wow. kind of why two second lean and lean is so powerful. We're yeah. doing these small improvements all the time and we're getting these dopamine hits Absolutely. Every time we do an improvement, I, I never realized that before. And another thing that you said that I thought was really cool, the morning meeting is a form of one piece flow. Yeah. And we were actually talking about this, I think yesterday as a team, we were saying that the pennies drop for us with the morning meeting where it's it's daily team development. Yeah. So instead of like us all going on like a one week course somewhere mm -hmm. and batching all of our quote unquote development, it's like we're taking 10 minutes every single day to invest in our learning or yeah. it's not you know I'm, we're going to set aside a whole afternoon to to read three chapters of a book it's like no we're going to read a page every single day yeah and that's yeah. powerful <laughs> it is uh, is it similar to our we used to do a, like a yearly team building thing at, at Seaton Matters where all 60 or 70 of us got on a big bus and went away somewhere for a, a team building activity but we realized that that's actually a batch <laughs> it is a batch <laughs> as well you know when more one piece flow is a monthly smaller team building activity where we get a barbecue or we get pizza or we do like a do an internal thing or, or go off site but smaller more incremental uh changes and improvements are always bigger than this large batch mm. even for example if, if a new employee starts the week after the yearly team building activity you know they've missed it until the next year <laughs> yeah, again yeah 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 Whereas, hold your breath <laughs> aye, with, this, with smaller batches we're, we're catching that every month very cool so moving on to the third and final level then going big philosophical how can the lean principle of one piece flow change society as we know it change the world change everything uh, one of the reasons toyota is so successful is because all of these lean principles are how we should be living they've almost aligned uh you can maybe help me with the wording of this but they've aligned business with how we should be living our lives. Yeah. So all the lean principles translate a hundred percent to the way we should be living. That's the thing because we're both reading the Toyota way at the minute. Yeah. Maybe we'll do an episode on that. I don't know. But one yeah. of the, the my big takeaways is that Toyota is their mission is to make society better. Yeah. And that those values filter into everything that they do inside and outside of the business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 
So one piece flow on the production line, yes, but how can we apply one piece flow to our lives? Well, one thing that comes to mind straight away is if you get inspired by a podcast like this and you want to go and make a change, make one change at a time. Mm. Don't go and change the whole place and make all these improvements. Make one change, then make another change. Because if you make too many changes at the one time, you're not sure which change made the difference. Yeah. So if you want to start going to the gym, just go to the gym and get that routine built up. Mm. Then in a month's time, if you want to get better at reading, start reading a page a day of a book along with going to the gym. Then you want to drink more water, start, keep going to the gym, start reading a page a day and then introduce drinking water. Mm -hmm. So slow, incremental improvements, one piece flow. Mm. I was thinking when you were talking earlier, especially here in Ireland, we kind of batch our love and compliments to people. Mm -hmm. So you'll see, you'll see like a, a cliche example might be like an Irish dad at a wedding who never says anything nice about anybody crying during a speech <laughs> because he's batching <laughs> all of the compliments yeah. in that moment. Yeah. Or, you know, like <laughs> telling your significant other like how much you love them or doing something nice for them daily instead of waiting for Valentine's Day or waiting for mm -hmm. birthdays or something like that. Yeah. There's kind of something in there. Like what you, you, you gave the example earlier of an annual performance review. Yes. You know, imagine just like giving feedback to your team in, in the shortest space of time as possible. That's right. We were, me and my wife were chat, chatting last night about One Piece Flow on, on the lead up to this podcast. And she was like, school reports are our batch. Yes. You know, you wait to the end of the year to see how your child has performed at school. Mm. That's mad when that you think mad. about it. Yeah. You know, they should be getting feedback. I'm not saying every day but, or every week, even every month. Yeah. A smaller batch, a small mini report on how your child is performing instead of waiting to the end of the year to find out that, you know, there's there's something that could have been fixed because yeah. that feedback loop is so, so long that there's no opportunity to improve or make it better during the year. Yeah. Yeah, like another example kind of like on the broader scale, I feel like I always come back to this for the level threes is I always think about government, healthcare and councils and like a wee healthcare example, like as you know, like we had a baby two months ago yeah. and so before then we were doing all sorts of maternity appointments in the hospitals mm -hmm. and it's so interesting you, know, you would walk in and you would talk to like a receptionist and then you would sit down and then the receptionist would see five more people and then everyone would wait and then one nurse would come and take five people's bloods and then everyone would wait yeah. and then take five people's urine samples and then sit down and wait and then you'd have five sit down meetings with you know one on one behind a closed door yeah. do you have any questions and then you'd all sit down and wait again and then five more would go and do the scans and you're like mate we all could have been out. If this was one piece flowed, like we could have been out of here in a fifth of the time. And yeah. probably could like the healthcare system, the, the hospital we were in, they probably could have had half the staff and run yeah. a, even a better product for the SERP, for us as the customers as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I even see it, you know, with some of the ones the lottery. You yeah. know, they've got <laughs> no money, then they've got a huge batch of money. And it's such a huge amount that they're not in harmony with the money. They don't know what to do with it. And it, a lot of the times it has a lot of uh, negative effects because mm. it's a huge batch. You know, a, a better system going forward would potentially be smaller drips of money over a longer period. Mm. This hu A huge batch of anything creates so much waste and over-processing and defects and confusion and burden. Uh, you know, whether it's money, whether it's over-producing in a factory, if it's too much information, you know, on a service-based company, a huge batch of anything is just so wasteful. Mm. It's really interesting why you were talking there. I was thinking about the natural world. And if you look at how the natural world operates, whether it's a, a tree growing or yeah. a flower, it's like small incremental. Mm -hmm. It's not like, boom, all of a sudden no. the, the, the tree just pops up overnight. Do you know what I mean? That's right. It takes time to strengthen itself and move forward, move forward, move forward. So, yeah, I, I really like that. Ryan, for people listening or people watching, how can they start to implement One Piece Flow into their lives? Like, is there one practical thing that you'd suggest them doing after listening to this podcast? There's so many practical, small things that you can do right away. Even one thing that I do personally is WhatsApp. I use WhatsApp a lot. I don't wait until the end of the day or the end of the week and sit down and do all my emails if I have an idea, I lift out my phone, I do a voice message, I WhatsApp, WhatsApp somebody with an idea, 
you know, a voice message is like a hundred times faster than sitting down and opening up your laptop to type an email. Mm. And you can hear the emotion. You can get, you can express more in a twenty-second voice message than you can in a, <laughs> you know, a five-paragraph email. Yeah. So that's one piece flow. Yeah. That's acting now. Small incremental changes, small improvements. If you have an idea, share it straight away. Don't wait until a batch. That that's a simple thing that could be applied like straight away after listening to this podcast. Ryan, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure as always. Thank you. It's been brilliant. Uh, And thank you so much for listening or watching. If you would like to visually have an example of what One Piece Flow looks like, there's no better place to do it than Seat Matters. Would highly recommend you coming for a Lean Made Simple Tour. It is probably the best example. Not probably. It is the best example that I've ever seen of all of these lean, lean principles in action. And so if you want to kickstart your lean journey, if you want to pour rocket fuel on your existing journey, I'd recommend uh, going for a tour with yourself and your team members. And I know Ryan and the team would be uh, delighted to host you guys and see you there. So yeah, other than that, Mark, Ryan, thank you for today. Thank you. And um, we'll see you again next time. Cheers.